So here we have a map painting from Conan. And if we take a look at some of the reference photos surrounding the map painting, we can see how we can put together a shot like this. So when we have a map painting like this, um, you know, the director will tell you, um, you know, I have this city in the background as, as Conan the hero approaches it. It's a beautiful sunset sky. It's in the middle of a desert, and um, it's a nice establishing shot. So we might get some of that. We might get a concept. But now the map painter goes, and you know he may do a quick sketch of this to show the director to get a buy off on the map painting before he goes, you know, full fledged into it. And say we get our concept approved, how do we start bringing this into a photo reel, uh, you know, feature film map painting? Well, it's the same process that we would use during the sketch phase. sketching phase is collecting reference, and that pertains to the lighting of our shot, maybe some, um, some reference pertaining to the subject matter of the shot, meaning, you know, there's a city structure with some, it looks, uh, you know, Middle Eastern vibe to it. Um, the light, the lighting scenario will be sunset, you know, the sun is setting and the orange and the the warms and the cools of the sky, and uh, it's set in a desert with, uh, you know, the dust and the haze. So we start gathering reference that has um, elements of that. So first we do a search for the lighting. So one thing we're going to search for is sunset desert. Pretty simple search. We want to see what we can get. And we start, you know, we end up with, or we start with, this is by no means the the end of the search this is just a few I collected quickly but you can see even a quick search brings us you know close to the final so we can see okay um, this is what a desert could look like during sunset this is another option and yet another option now this is something that you know the director may specify you know I don't really want a blue sunset sky I may I really want that warm horizon and maybe the top as as you know the sky uh, goes above us gets a little cooler so you you get notes based on that and you can slowly weed out your reference you'd be like okay doesn't want a cool sky warm horizon maybe a little bit of uh, cool and on the top well now we can start looking at um, the value structure of the ground compared to the sky. So let's see what the exposure of this shot. We're just going to run a DSAT on that to start analyzing just the values. All right, so we have the sky. If we look at this reference, the sky is a little bit darker. So we may not want to blast it. And again, this is photo reference, so it's not, you know, you don't know what it's been taken from. It could be a point and shoot. So, you know, it, you get this overexposed, blown out white. Um, so don't take that, you know, uh, verbatim. We may want, we, the director may say, I want a nice, clear, you know, sign of the sun back in the sky. Or we may paint that, you may like it. So we may go with, you know, something that feels a little bit more like this reference. And you can see the value of the sky is very similar. Even the, cl even the clouds in the sky and the way it's lit, very similar to this. So these are the type of lighting cues that we can take from our photo reference. We, can, we know, okay, the value of the sky is going to be this bright. The clouds in the sky are going to be this value compared to the sky. So if you look, if we take, copy and paste it, look how close it is now. Yeah, the director may say, you know, tone down the, the sun a little bit so it's not too stark doesn't draw too much attention to itself so we can just tone that down but you can see how everything else starts feeling like in the right right place and if you squint your eyes there's very little difference between these two so right there we can cue off of this as our lighting reference you know what and the the amount of atmosphere actually in this photo reference is similar to the to the amount of atmosphere in this reference in the in the map painting so we know now okay this is how this is the value of the mountains in the distance for our map painting we know we can see from this photo reference the amount of detail we see 
in the mountains in the distance is very, very subtle. We may not see it at all. The quality of this photo obviously has been shrunk down just to fit on this page, but we will be able to see, okay, how much detail do we see in that? What's the contrast between the light side of the, the faces, you know, getting a little bit of that sun compared to the shadow side? Um, look at the, the value as this recedes between, let me just get a, a quick color here for you so we can, so you can see what I'm talking about. The value between this mountain and that mountain, you can see a clear separation here. So those are some of the cues that we may need. You know, you have one, two, three, four, five, and maybe even six different values as the atmosphere recedes into the distance. And that's those are the cues that we want to take and put in our painting to add realism and depth, as you can see it receding back into the horizon. So the other thing that we can take note of is also the value of the sand. Now in this one, it seems to be a lot lighter than what we have in the map painting. Now that may be you know, an artistic decision, it may be uh, the director or art director that wants it to be darker, but it looks like we're, in this photo reference, we're a little closer to what we see in the map painting. So we can play around with it, you know, you can use this exposure and they may, you know, you come back and say, well, we want the ground a little bit darker, just, you know, you can curve that down and we start getting to this realm and it starts feeling a little bit more like this. So once we have our value structure down, it's not too hard to hit the color. I like can see, you know, the colors are very similar. The values, again, when we said the ground is a little different, and that is also an artistic decision. Now, once your values are correct, you can you can push your colors to what you want to set in your painting, whether it's a mood or what uh, a concept art um, that was given to you, or just uh, the guidance from the art director or director. So the underlying um, you know, uh, structure of this resides in the value. If we hit the value right, the color will just come together um, a lot easier. And the painting will just look, the exposure of the painting and the lighting in the painting is just going to look very real. And we have to do very little to get this thing to a photoreal uh, quality. So the next uh, part of this painting is, okay, we have a city structure. Now, what does a city structure look like? Now, they may give you concepts of that, or they may ask you, or, and it may be you know, described in the script. Um, but say we have a concept you know, of the silhouette, and you're putting it together. Well, now we have to figure out how, what does this city look like under these lighting conditions in this environment, which has a lot of dust, a lot of sand, a lot of atmosphere. And how do we paint that? Well, we can find structures like this in real life. This is a, uh, it's called the Blue Mosque. It's in Istanbul, Turkey. You can tell it's very similar in, uh, you know, architecture and design to what we have in the map painting. So if we were to just do a simple image search of the Blue Mosque and just type Blue Mosque Sunset, we can get pretty close um, in lighting and atmosphere to what we have in the map painting. Now if we look at this, and again we turn off color because the most important thing here is value. And when, we, when we're looking at something like this, um, a big city structure, it's out, and out, it's out in the distance, so there's a lot of atmosphere affecting the lighting, we have to take cues um, from photo reference of, okay, what is the contrast between the lights and the darks because that contrast is 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 the cue to say how far this city is in the distance and how much atmosphere is in the air so if this is in a desert scene you're going to have a lot of atmosphere in the air we're going to go with very you know the contrast between the lights and darks are not that great and that's what gives us that really far distant you know, atmospheric look is the contrast between the light and darks. So that's one cue we can take away from looking at photo reference. The other cue is 
you know, how is, how is the structure lit? Well, it looks like, you know, there is no direct sunlight. As we have in here, we might get a little bit of rim light, as you can see in here. And that just shows that, you know, that's a metallic object. Now, we may not have metallic objects in here. That may be something that uh, we can Google um, again, do another image search for metallic churches with, you know, to, to see what that will look like. But as far as the value, we can see, okay, how are these structures lit, you know, for the form? Um, you can see the separation between this structure. How do I know that this is in front of the other and add depth within the structure itself? Because we don't want everything to be so similar that depth is, is killed and it looks really flat. We need to have a two-face read, you know, the front face and the back face. So you have light and shadow. And that's what's going to give you depth. So we have light in here and then shadow behind that causes separation, that causes depth instead of having it, you know, very similar value and making it look flat. So that's another thing we can pull in here. So, you know, where we have light, there's usually a dark behind it to cut it out um, from the background. You know, the top facing surfaces are getting that skylight, that fill light. You know, to separate it from the top, from the side. The side is darker than the top. That's, again, we see that example here. You know, top facing surfaces are getting lit by the sky, and the side facing surfaces are away from that skylight, so they're going to be a lot darker. So, those are some of the lighting cues that we can pull just from photo reference and, and implement it into our shots. You can see the tops are lighter than the sides. The tops are lighter than the sides. So, you know, I, I believe it's Dylan Cole who did this painting. He's awesome and he just he knows, you know, how to look at photo reference and pull out exactly what he needs to to make this look real. So that's just a a quick breakdown of how we can look at photo reference and how we can pull information out of it. Um, to create something as beautiful as this. It doesn't have to be that complicated if you just know what to pull from the photo reference. So let's take